Okay, welcome. It's so awesome to have you all finally in this room. This is PowerShell Conference EU 2019. My name is Tobias. And uh, a conference like this has so many moving parts, many of which are beyond our control. So yesterday we had a huge thunderstorm in Hanover. A couple of speakers are still missing. Stefan made it in time. And, uh, <laughs> actually, this is PowerShell Conference EU. It's everyone in this room. And if, you, uh, if you're missing on this slide, then that's because you didn't send us your picture by Saturday. And should, you should change that uh, and make sure you, you, that you're sending us your picture until Thursday so that we can uh, create a more complete slide at the end of this conference. Okay, now if you've been here before, you know what's my task now. I'll probably present the only, the first and last session that has nothing to do with PowerShell. I want to walk you through this conference so that you get the most out of it. Uh, and since uh, we did not have any speaker dropouts this year, there is no session left for me to sneak in some PowerShell, so I'm trying to get a little bit of code into that, uh, into that opening too. And in fact, what you see here is pure PowerShell. It's WPF, and um, I'm sort of pointing you to a couple of uh, slides. I didn't want to show you that, but I will. Anyway, this was this morning. Yeah, I just wanted to show you this feeling this morning. We were coming here at 6 o'clock in the morning. The hotel was still under fog, and it all smelled like a summer day. So we thought, oh, it's going to be awesome. OK, that's another thing. It's a picture taken from up here this morning. Uh, it's just the reserved seats for the speakers. It's quite amazing when you look at the speaker lineup that we have. When I created this opening slide, at a mo for a moment, I thought it's interesting to see just how many people have contributed to PowerShell over the past 13 years. And then it suddenly struck me, and I, I just that said, that's the speakers. They're right here, so you can interact with them. You can talk and uh, ask questions, and I'm really excited. Anyway, there is a session this morning. Uh, no, it's on Friday. It's about WPF. Uh, Jakob, where are you? I'm really looking forward to that one because you are showing how you can do real WPF uh, with PowerShell. I thought that wasn't possible. We'll see. And um, I want to highlight two people before we dive into any other topics. Uh, Alexander, where are you? Um, and Rob, where are you? Rob Sewell, please stand up. I know you hate that. <laughs> they both volunteered to join the content team and spend many, many hours working on the agenda we're about to enjoy. So thanks a lot. Then um, we have a user group meeting. And that's interesting because we have representatives from the PowerShell user groups from Denmark, France, Poland, Germany, Austria. I hope I don't forget, didn't forget anyone. Please come there if you want to, want to find out more about user groups or if you'd like to set up your own and just connect to other user groups in your vicinity. Oh, that's important too. This is a session that was added in, last, uh, in a last minute fashion. We have a couple of sessions during lunch and this is one that's completely optional. You can have lunch or you can have lunch and take your food inside of this red room and uh, join this discussion. But if you do that, please uh, take your food out again. Like we got permission that you can take your food into the session rooms during lunchtime under the condition that the service personnel doesn't have to clean up after you. So that would be awesome if you could do that. Okay, we have a dog attending. Where's the dog? <laughs> it's over there. Yeah, well, if there's anything that shows how popular PowerShell is. <laughs> so if, if, there's any, if there's any issue with the dog, it's a very friendly old senior dog. So if, I think we'll, we'll get along fine. Okay, um, and we have not just sessions, we have also coffee breaks. And Jeffrey once said the sessions are great, but the coffee breaks really is where the magic happens, where you can get into discussion, where you can take the stuff out of your sessions and discuss it with others. And I was just looking at how many coffee breaks we have, and I found that we have a total of 21 coffee breaks, and when you run this code, you'll find out that we have an amazing eight hours of, and 20 minutes of doing nothing. <laughs> And that is cool. 
In fact, it's not nothing, but we'll have good chances of talks. This is where you all come from. It's amazing to see that this conference covers 29 countries, and um, this time we asked you to provide a little bit more information so that our speakers know who to deal with. And so we ask you to participate in a survey, and these are the results. Oh, these are the, the, these are the results from the locations. First of all, I have to make an, um, a confession. I'm, I'm sometimes a little bit surprised when I see the slides, because I put together this, this slide deck a week ago. And in the meantime, we are organizing this conference, and I didn't have the time to really look at the slides once more again. So this is the map. And when you dive into Europe, you'll see that almost every country in Europe is really covered with delegates. That's really awesome. And Thank you. So now to the survey. We wanted to know how much PowerShell experience do you have? And it was quite interesting to see that the majority of you has a couple of years of experience. And then we wanted to know just how important is PowerShell for your job? And that was something that surprised us, that only a small fraction really is using PowerShell occasionally. The majority is using it on a daily basis, and a third, for a third, it's really mission critical. We wanted to know the operating system in a couple of details, and obviously most of you are on a Windows platform. That's natural, because Windows PowerShell was where we all started. However, only a third is not using any cloud service. And obviously, that's also because we're coming from Windows. Uh, the PowerShell type in use is like this. 13% are using core already in production, as it seems. And we have a couple of sessions about that as well. PowerShell development has never been as open as it is today. Like three years ago, when we celebrated PowerShell's 10th anniversary, it was a closed Microsoft development, and you had to be MVP and sign a pile of paper to may get a glimpse of what is the next version of PowerShell. Today, you can participate, and you can uh, look at RFCs, like discussion threads, and see what is planned for the future. We have a, another lunch break session. It is today in the Red Room. And we would like to introduce you a little bit into the nature of RFCs, how you can put in your ideas into PowerShell development and, and actually see what is happening. And we also have another session by Torsten Butz, who is always famous for his critical talks. So he's going to view, yeah, that's him. <laughs> So he's going to look at the other side. He's, well, his main statement is, in the field, much of what is developed right now isn't yet used. So we have to find a balance and, uh, and see what PowerShell can do in everyday life. PowerShell versions, that's also no surprise. And then we wanted to know, what's your knowledge? What, 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 do you, what, what, was your, what is your background? And one thing I found interesting was your development background. One third of you is, uh, has a developer background or uses it with PowerShell. Uh, let's say this one. So one third is actually using C Sharp in one way or another, using add type or compiling DLLs or writing binary commandlets or something like that. It is remarkable to see that there is a large percentage who is actively trying to avoid C Sharp and uh, raw um, objects or doesn't really know much about it. And I think that's a, quite an interesting message, because it means there's also, there's one, for one, there's potential. There's lots of awesome stuff that you can do when you, when you, when you uh, reach into this area, but also to make sure that PowerShell always provides you uh, commandlets for anything important and doesn't refer you to just .NET methods and objects. There was a discussion on PowerShell Core lately. OK, Linux experience. We can see that lots of you are actively investigating Linux. And how do you learn PowerShell? That is interesting to see that most of us are doing it learning by doing. There is a fraction using books and conferences, which shows as a PowerShell beginner, it's easy to get training. However, when you are an experienced PowerSheller, it's much harder to get this information that you need. The best way is to talk to other experienced PowerShellers. That's why you're here. DSC. DSC is not used by many, however, by a fraction of, let's say, 15%, which 
also is no surprise, DSC is on top of automation, so the vast majority of us is doing classic automation. IoT. Apparently, 84% of you have never really looked into IoT, and that's fun. You should. <laughs> that's one of our speakers. He's going to show you a couple of things. Uh, we have a number of sessions on IoT because I think it's interesting. You can get devices for just a couple bucks. They can run PowerShell. You can connect sensors to it or scanners or cameras, whatever you want to, and build little devices and reuse your PowerShell knowledge. Now, PESTA, we are privileged with so many uh, speakers that created things. So we are proud to say that the inventor of PESTA is with us as well. And uh, we have two sessions about that. We have a breakout session. It's a community talk about the upcoming PESTA version 5. It's taking place on Wednesday. So join Jakub if you want to hear what's up in version 5 or want to toss in your own ideas. And we have plenty of other uh, sessions. If you open your conference app, provided that it works, <laughs> you well, we had a couple of issues there too. Uh, they decided two days before the conference to change a major, or to have a major version change. Uh, not a good idea. So when you look for PESTA, you'll see a couple of uh, sessions around that topic. Okay. Now it's amazing to see what people do with statistics. Now, this is actually a study. You wouldn't believe that. It's a very interesting study when you dive into the methodology. We'll just uh, stop here. We're not diving more into statistics. Instead, I'd like to just point on a couple of things. Why are we doing a conference like this? What brings us here? Why do we take the hassle of jumping on a plane and stuff? Well, it is partially because of code like this. Partially because uh, people like to shorten code. It makes absolutely no point to shorten, shorten code because it's really hard to read. But it's fun. And I mean, Sudoku doesn't have really a point either. It's mind jogging. And the fun thing is when you do mind jog and use PowerShell, there's a high chance that you learn more about your business. This code, for example, checks a password and to see if it was seen in previous hacker attacks. So if it is a regular part of dictionary attacks. We have a lot of security sessions every year because security is not a static thing, it changes. And currently we're seeing uh, changes in the password um, guidance. No longer is it recommended to have complex passwords that you need to change every week. Instead, it is much more important that the password you pick is unique and that no one really uses it in a dictionary attack. This, for example, is a perfect uh, password for complexity criteria. Still, it's completely unsecure. Let's just jump into this code real quick. It's right here. So when I run it, I can see it has been seen in 51,000 previous hacker attacks. If you use that password, you can use no password instead as, all, as well. Let's take here Sunshine. See how many people use Sunshine. Yes, please. So you can incorporate this script into your own logic if you want to. And um, I would like to make it a challenge. So if you, if you are up to that, let's make it a challenge. These are the, the sessions about passwords. And if you would like to shorten this code, go to powershell.beer. That brings you exactly to the point where we have all our resources. And you'll also find the source code for this. And if you really manage to shorten this code considerably, then you get one of those original blue first year conference mugs. We only have very few of these, and on, well, it's only for the first that has the most significant short, short, short code. We don't have so many of those mugs, but try it. And we'll present the code to you on Friday. Now, shortening code is, another, is one thing. Another passionate thing that PowerShellers like to do is speed up code, work on performance. And uh, there are two sessions about that by Stefan. Stefan, uh, good to have you, finally. Uh, you are looking at performance optimizations from a very deep level. However, very enjoyable. But I'm just giving a forewarning. That's not for the faint-hearted. You're looking at tools that you can use to evaluate how much memory your scripts use and stuff like that. I have a demo for you that is rated G, so it's OK. 
switch over here. Sometimes, and that's the reason why we are here in this conference, is it's, it's that in everyday life, you are stumbling across phenomenons, and then maybe they have the, the, the power to change PowerShell and make it more uh, faster. Let's take a look at something that I've seen very, very often in code reviews. It's code like this. I'm not sure if you're using code like this, and this is just a simplification. It is basically an array, and then you're doing something in a loop many times. Maybe you're, in, you're doing an inventory or stuff like that, and then you are adding information to that array with, the, with this dreaded plus equals operator, and in the end, it takes a long time. Let's take a look at a couple of alt alternatives. Some are surprising. This is the smart ass solution. That's the solution for those who say, hey, I know .NET Framework. Hey, I can, I can simply cast this to an array list, and then I can add things, and I get a hundred like times speed increase. This thing is a hundred times faster than the script before. You can also be just plain PowerShell smart, which looks like this. Now, this was an increase of 99. This one has 138. It's much easier. This is the code. Simply let PowerShell, let the loops, let the constructs in PowerShell take care of creating the arrays for you. Here's one that is even smarter. It used to be. You could use as an iteration variable PowerShell's internal underscore variable, and it used to be faster than before. But for some reason, in the past couple of releases, it, this might have been fixed. I don't know. We can talk to the, uh, to the team members. But So when you use PowerShell, that's the fastest approach you can get. You have a speed increase of 111. However, the pipeline is still quite slow. 1.2, not very fast. And to be honest with you, I often thought that the pipeline slowishness would be caused by having to sort of hand over all these elements one by one. And then it occurred to me, when you use a simple function like this, it is tons faster, 100 times faster. So I'm simply, instead of for each, I'm simply using a script block that I invoke with a process block inside, that, which is basically for each object. And the only difference between this and the normal for each object is that we are using a simple function here. So we are skipping the parameter binder. And that's stuff on what I was talking about. Typically, when you pipe stuff into modern PowerShell functions, each element get, uh, goes through the parameter binder, which figures out which parameter should get the element, and the old, good old simple functions that were introduced in PowerShell 1, they don't have this feature, which is bad, but for this it's great because we don't need the parameter binder, and so this way you can significantly uh, sort of speed up your pipelines. Anyway, you see, I'm just trying to pump in a couple of PowerShell things that I would like to get across because I don't have my own session. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to look at my clock because there's one iron rule at, at PSConf EU, that's our session uh, design. And each speaker has to stick to this session design. So a session is always 45 minutes, and then we have 15 minutes Q&A, and then you have to leave the room, so the room time is one hour, you have to go into the mandatory coffee break. The reason for this is because we really want to have, we have 80 sessions and we have three tracks, we really, really want to have every speaker the, the time to set up the gear and test the demos. So basically, that's why we have a warning. It's a clear warning to the speakers that it's time to come to an end. And if they don't, there's an even clearer warning. And then they get kicked out. In the past, we tried a lot of things. In our first conference, we had I think, Jeffy, you will remember, we were sitting at this table, and we had this thing. It only worked partially. The next year, we had this. But you know, when you have a passionate PowerShell speaker really burning for what he's, he's bringing across, it's really hard to get him out of this. So last year, we tried something different, and uh, I brought it with me. It turned out to be not so optimal. It was, but it, well, it has a forewarning. You know, 
please watch your ears, and it has a full alarm. Well, the good thing was, there was absolutely no room for debate. <laughs> but the bad thing was, it, it wasn't considered polite. <laughs> so we sort of changed that, and we are, well, we tried a lot of things. Get off the stage now. <laughs> we didn't do that. Oh, we have, we got this thing. That's cool, too. Let's see. But we are simply doing this. We're going back to good old hourglasses. So the rule is, yeah. <laughs> this thing runs 45 minutes. So when it's up, it's time for you, for you to come to an end. You have 15 more minutes before it's getting, um, before we are getting non-polite. This is basically, where's the picture? Picture. Hmm? Oh, it could be. And see, what, what, what is when something goes wrong? I, um, well, actually, that is inevitable. Can someone help me with a video? Um, and so if something goes wrong, and that can happen in presentations as well, we are all in this together. Please uh, uh, re be reminded that, that all the speakers are volunteering, and they are coming here from far away trying to share their stuff. And so if something goes wrong, uh, let's just take a look together what's wrong in the code or in the, in the wiring. <laughs> and if we... Woo! Thank you. So basically, that's the design. We have this run-out area for your presentation, which consists of the Q&A and break. And so if you really need the full 60 minutes, take the people out of the room into the coffee break with you so you can have your Q&A over there. So now, for those of you, who of you is attending PowerShell Conference the first time? Awesome. Wow, that's great. Welcome. Well, this is where we are right now. We are on the first floor in the Beethoven or now Leibniz room. And if you want to, get to, want to go to the other two tracks, it's the door to your back. And there you turn to your right and just keep on walking for about 200 meters which brings you basically from here all the way over here to the other area. This is track two, track three, and in between both we have the lunch area where we also have our info booth. Um, on Friday, it will be like last year. So on Friday only, we won't be here. Instead, on Friday, this moves down to the round room. Okay, and now a little bit code again. I think I have the time. Uh, we wanted to show you in a good way where we have our evening event. And when you take your badge, you have a couple of QR codes on your badge. One is for Wi-Fi, one is for the evening location. So you can scan this and they get directions. You can't really get lost. However, last year when we created this QR code generator module in PowerShell that creates these things for you, we used the Google API. And the moment we did that, they changed their terms. Now you need an API key. That doesn't work for us. So we are looking for some kind of geolocation a service that is free and doesn't require an API key. So this was one we came up with. It's geocode XYZ. And here's a little PowerShell question for you. So this is what we tried. We wanted to give you a QR code for the Yazoo Hanover. We encoded it so that we could send it to the REST API, which now looked like this. And then we use good old invoke REST method, which is basically sending like a browser the information to the service, and we always got back this. And that was funny because really, this is the URL we got. We send it here, and this is what we get in, in the browser. So where is the difference? Can anyone see, has a suggestion, what we could have missed? Huh? Yeah, that's, there's a, a misspelling in there. They're okay, U for Hanover, but that wasn't causing the throttle limit. Okay, well, it took us an afternoon, and here's the solution with some REST methods. We needed to introduce a session variable because the REST method wanted some cookies, wanted to have some kind of browser information and authentication information, even though it was anonymous. So we, uh, we were calling the base page with the session variable. It's awesome that invoke REST method allows us to do that. 
And then this is our cookie container. And once we are sending the request with this session, we get back all the information. So we updated the module for you. If you want to, you can go to the PowerShell gallery. It's called QR Code Generator. It runs on all versions of PowerShell, including PowerShell 6 and 7. And you can use it to create all kinds of QR codes. Looks like this. This installs the module for you. Now you can say, hey, that's my party location. I need a QR code for this. And if you scan it with your um, camera and your smart, uh, smart device, you will all immediately get directions. We also added QR codes for Twitter and a couple of other things. OK, so this is the evening event tonight. Uh, we are here. We are going this way, down this road, to the main entrance. And if you want to go there, you can either walk. It's a half a mile. You can take your own car, but then you have to leave it there because we have lots of drinking tonight. You can take the tram if you want to. It's exactly one station. Or you can take a cab. I would not recommend. <laughs> Whatever you do, just be sure that you are at the main entrance by 6.45. Please bring your badge. That's your entrance uh, ticket. If you want to bring guests and haven't registered them yet, we are simply forwarding the cost of the zoo to guests, so it's 90 euro. Uh, that includes all drinking and eating till late, but we have no way of sort of negotiating that with the zoo. Uh, I'm not drinking that much, sorry, 90 euro. So if you want to come uh, and bring guests, just register them. And this is what this looks like. So you shouldn't miss out on that. It's fun. We have handmade ice cream. It's going to be fun. If you have any questions, if you lost something, found something, need assistance in any way, go to the info booth, which is located in Bonard's room. That's where our staff is. And please, don't eat anything if you can't handle it. That's important. You can get always, you can talk to the kitchen staff if you have requirements, if you're a vegetarian, if you need special things. Uh, that's no problem at all. Now, speaker of the year. Let's see. Um, I, I need a drum. The speaker of the year. The speaker of the year is a speaker that was selected by the delegates from last year. So, uh, the speaker of the year this year is Walter. Hey. Where's Walter? Come here. Hey, it's good to see you. Come on stage. You see his talk last year? That's for you? He's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Well, I can just say, I didn't know Walter last year. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's so funny. We have the, the, the greatest speakers here, and they're all so shy. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Walter's sessions were so great last year. Uh, I really, we all really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. So to vote this year, last year we had these funny devices. Uh, I forgot to bring one, but they didn't work anyway very well. So we asked people to vote um, on paper. This year we'll do it differently. Um, when the app works, it will now in this new version include uh, the option to go to a session and vote for it. That's what we ask you to do. I really hope that the app will work this morning. If you have problems with it, tell me. I'm in contact with the Indian developers. We're trying to sort things out. Uh, and this is how you get uh, the uh, conference app if you don't have it yet. Connect to the Wi-Fi. You have the QR code on your badge. Uh, skip that for speed. And then, that's what I wanted to show you. Go to PowerShell.camp. PowerShell.camp opens the website that has the downloads for the uh, conference app, and then you can install it on all the devices you want. And just remember, PowerShell Camp is getting you the app, and PowerShell Beer was the challenge. You can also, yeah, uh, if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can uh, use this extension from Stefan Stanger. Stefan, where are you? <laughs> Thanks so much. Awesome stuff. And then one last thing. If you are here for the first time, uh, this was a Twitter tweet. I think it's awesome. 
someone just said, hey, I'm coming here the first time, I'm not used to international conferences, how do I make friends? And when you see all these pictures, you may have ru heard rumors about this conference, you may ask yourself either how can I join or how can I avoid that? So it's up to you, whatever you want to do, but it's a very welcoming um, community here. And tonight at the evening event, we'll have these flags. So these flags will be at the main entrance for you to grab. And it's not supposed to, you're not supposed to grab one if you feel lonely. <laughs> Instead, if you are a group, if you are speak the language of the flag, that's a, that's a criteria. Please speak the language of the flag, then take the flag with you. This is simply to break the ice. It's not that we want tables to be segregated by country, not at all. It is simply if you want to find someone who is welcoming and embracing you, then go to the flag. And later on, it'll dissolve anyway. So, I just wanted to show you, uh, this is what it looks like uh, at the conference, so don't worry, it'll work. It'll work eventually. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so you can grab one flag, and we have a EU flag if you want to be a culture neutral. <laughs> These are the flags. And then one last thing here. These are a couple of golden rules you want to consider for this conference. Keep in mind, the sessions are great, but the sessions are just an igniting spark for everyone to discuss things. We have so many more things to do on this conference and really meeting the people, getting in touch with people, talk and make connections is also a very nice part of being here. So now to the Mac. Uh, we have a conference Mac, of course, this year again. However, there's a good and a bad news. The bad news is, due to reasons I cannot disclose, uh, there are no extra Macs this year. So you can get one, you will get one, but there's no really no room for buying any extra Macs. However, the good news is we are doing a garage sale. We found so many stuff from the previous years, so we'll have that, and you can get at least replacement Macs for the previous years. And this is the mug. There it is. <laughs> the color, as every year, the color is the color of the year, which is living coral. And I am sure it doesn't take long for you to figure out what this means. However, I'm not going to let you see that for long. It's a surprise when you get the mug. So the garage sale, that is all the stuff from the previous years, will be on sale on, I think, Thursday. And now let's welcome our speakers. Can I have ask all the speakers on stage, grab your flag. <laughs> Just got any flag. I bought the flag. <laughs> take, take them all. Take them all, yeah. Take them all. So this is the historic moment. We are now sort of. <laughs> so this is a historic moment. We are opening PowerShell Conference uh, EU 2019. It's great to have you here. Let's have awesome four days. All right. Wonderful. Speakers, please get your speaker jackets. The speaker jackets are on these things here. Grab your jacket. They are sorted by size. This is the boarding. And while you do, 
In the first two days, you'll recognize speakers by these jackets, uh, except if they don't wear it because it's too hot. Uh, on the third day, you will all get these jackets, thanks to our sponsor, Amazon AWS. So on the third day, we're all melting together in one yellow uh, jacket mass. Thank you.